Thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the presentation I'm going to talk about is consideration of establishing Q1, Q2 sameness of complex formulations. In this presentation, I would like to use a PLGA-based product as an example to show you what are the considerations when you try to establish Q1, Q2 sameness for such products. Since my presentation talk about Q1, Q2 sameness, I would like to start the presentation with the definition of Q1, Q2. Q1 means that the test products use the same inactive ingredient as the RLD. Q2 means that the concentration of inactive ingredient used in the test product are within plus minus 5% of those used in the RLD. Why we need Q1, Q2 sameness? Q1, Q2 sameness is required by regulation for perianto, ophthalmic, or otic dosage form. The generic products need to be Q1, Q2 the same to the RLD. In addition, Q1, Q2 sameness may be recommended in PSG using alternative methods to demonstrate PE in lieu of in vivo B studies. When Q1, Q2 sameness is required, or recommend it. An applicant may submit a control correspondence to request for Q1, Q2 formulation assessment. Uh, please ref for more information, please refer to uh, this draft guidance for industry. As I mentioned, uh, it's, it's generally straightforward to establish Q1, Q2 for non-complex product. But for complex formulations, uh, it's more complicated. However, it's not possible to cover all the complex formulation in such a short presentation. I would like to use the PLGA-based product as an example. PLGA is used in FDA-approved products for a variety of formulations, of, such as microspheres, in-situ forming gel, and implants. There are around 17 approved new drug products use PLGA as inactive ingredient. And currently, there's no approved generic products for, for PLG for products with PLGA excipients. As we know, PLGA is a non competitive excipient, and the in vivo performance of such products heavily rely on the polymer properties. And also, the polymer properties can change by the manufacturing process. For example, PLGA polymer can undergo hydrolysis and results in change in molecular weight and other key properties during the manufacturing process. Here shows an example of the formulation table uh, used for a Q1, Q2 assessment. Such formulation table like, contain the formulation composition of the IOD product and the proposed test product. Please note, when we talk about Q1, Q2, uh, we only concern the inactive, inactive ingredient, not the API. The in the composition of the IOD formulation, you can get it from the labeling of IOD products, or you can uh, get it from your own reverse engineering. It's quite, it's usually uh, straightforward to establish Q1, Q2 for non-complex product by matching the composition of the IOD with the test product. However, for the for complex product uh, formulation containing uh, non convenient excipients, it's not that straightforward. For example, in this formulation, it contained a copolymer. It's not possible just to establish Q1 by the name of PRJ polymer. Therefore, a composition table alone is not sufficient to make the Q1, Q2 assessment. Therefore, uh, you are recommended to provide comparative physical chemical characterization data on the PRJ polymer from the generic and the RD. The characterization should include, but not limited to, composition, molecular weight, molecular weight distribution, polymer structure, inherent viscosity, glass transition temperature, and polymer end cap. If the polymer is a star polymer, or it's a branch polymer, you should also categorize the branch frequency. If you find there's any difference, you need to provide justification on why this difference would not impact the safety and efficacy of the generic drug as compared to the RD. Here shows an example of the polymer characterization data. Those tables on 
Uh, on this slide, just give you examples how to present the comparative characterization in a Q1, Q2 control correspondence. Uh, please note, when you submit the Q1, Q2 control correspondence, we are not going to pre-review your data. So you may submit your method validation in the uh, ANDA. This figure on the uh, right-hand side actually give you an example of categorization of polymer end cap using C13 MMR. Based on the chemical shift of uh, 15 ppm, you can determine whether the end cap is acid or, or ester. Please refer to more uh, detailed information from this uh, literature, which is uh, part of the outcome from GRUFA funded science risk grant. Some common deficiencies we have found from previous Q1, Q2 control, including incomplete composition table. For example, there's no information on the diluent formulation provided. Lack of comparative physical chemical characterization data from the generic and IRD products. And incomplete or unacceptable polymer characterization data. Uh, I can discuss more in the following slides. For the product containing microsphere and diluent, if the microsphere and the diluent they are co-packaged, the Q1, Q2 sameness will be determined and commented on the whole product rather than the individual component. Please note, if you only uh, submit the formulation of the diluent and ask for Q1, Q2 assessment, we'll, we will not be able to give you comments on that. Therefore, you should provide a full formulation including both components. If you have one microsphere formulation and three uh, diluent formulation, we will consider you submit three formulation. In addition, um, uh, I would like to mention that maybe that's out of the scope of Q1, Q2. If the diluent uh, formulation contains CMC sodium, uh, we recommend you also uh, specify the viscosity grade of the CMC sodium and conduct the comparative viscosity measurement and submit that information in the end application because there is a variety of different viscosity grade of CMC sodium available. With regard to the polymer categorization data, uh, we recommend, uh, we want to emphasize that the polymer categorization should be conducted on the finished test product and the IRD. It's not acceptable just use the COA uh, from the polymer vendor. And also, it's not acceptable you just categorize the raw test material and then use that data to compare with the polymer from the IRD products. This is mainly based on the understanding that the manufacturing process can change the polymer property. And, and again, the polymer characterization should be complete. Here's the take home message. In addition to the composition table, comparative physical chemical characterization on a PLJ polymer are needed to make assessment on Q1, Q2 sameness of PLJ based product. The categorization should include but not limited to composition, molecular weight, molecular weight distribution, polymer structure, inherent viscosity, glass transition temperature, and polymer end cap. If the microsphere and diluent are co-packaged, Q1, Q2 sameness will be determined and commented on the whole product rather than individual component. And at last, applicants should provide sufficient validation data and methods used for polymer categorization in the ANDA submission. Thank you for your attention.